All right, Mervyn, well, let's begin with the employment unemployment report that just came out in the state of Arkansas. We're at 4.4%, which is a big decline from where we were from 10% a year ago. Um, what's the best news in this report, and is anything problematic? Yeah, I mean, I think, so this is a particularly important uh, unemployment and payroll report that we got for April of 2021. Uh, if you can think back to the horrors that were, was April of 2020, that was the month when, you know, a lot of businesses were closed and people just weren't doing anything, uh, much about anything in the economy at that time. So that was the peak of the shutdowns and it was the worst month for the employment report. And consequently, we'd seen the worst GDP print we'd seen in, you know, 50 or 60 years. So uh, it was important to get the April 2021 report and look at how far we've come from that uh, lowest point. And I think we have a lot of good pieces of uh, news from this employment report. For one, you know, you did mention that the unemployment rate stayed stable between March and April. Uh, but, you know, in the first couple of months, or at least the first three months or so of this year, uh, the unemployment rate has been going down, uh, but has been going down for the wrong reasons in the sense that you know people were leaving the labor force and not looking for work, and that's why the unemployment rate was going down. In April, actually what we saw was that people entered the labor force and found employment, and the number of unemployed people also went down. Uh, but the unemployment rate stayed stable because more people entered the labor force and found work. So that's actually uh, a much better uh, unemployment uh, news picture than what we had in, say, March and February of this year. So uh, the April report on that uh, particular side has been pretty good. Uh, on the payroll side, payroll employment in April of 2020 was down about 117 or so thousand jobs. Uh, and so compared to April of 2020 uh, to April of 2021, uh, we've added about 95 or so thousand jobs, so we've made most of those jobs back that we lost last year in April. Uh, we're still down something about 17,000 jobs if you compare uh, April of 2021 to April of 2019, uh, so a whole year before the pandemic. Uh, now, obviously, 17,000 jobs isn't the uh, you know final number that we want to gain. There was obviously going to be economic growth between April of 2019 and April of 2021 uh, that would have produced more than just 17,000 jobs. So we want to not only gain those sem remaining 17,000 jobs, uh, but we also want to get the extra jobs that would have happened had the pandemic not happened. And so uh, in particular, leisure and hospitality, which was the hardest hit sector, uh, saw 35,000 jobs come back. Uh, they're still down about 11,000 jobs from April of 2019. So there's some more room there. Uh, and uh, education and health services gained about 10,000 or so jobs uh, from last year, still down about uh, 5,000 or so from April 2019. So there's still, you know, those two sectors are particularly hard hit. There's still some room uh, for growth there, but we're starting to see a lot more growth in those particular sectors through the months this year. Arkansas is pushing to suspend its uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, that extra funding that's been coming through on a weekly basis for a lot of people. Uh, the logic being is that it is deterring people from finding work. Truth or fiction? So, I mean, I think in the past month, we've talked a lot about labor supply issues. Um, it's hard, uh, at least for a lot of economists, to agree that there is a labor supply issue, given that, you know, compared to April 2019, 17,000 people are still looking for work. Uh, in Arkansas overall, 11,000 people in the leisure and hospitality industry. So it's hard to say that there's a labor supply issue and the unemployment rate is higher than where it should be and, and as many people are looking for work. And we do have uh, some other data that indicates that there might not be as big a labor supply issue as people think there are. And I think what we have instead is you know, short-term friction in the labor market and some long-term issues that we've always had that we're talking about again. So on the short-term side, uh, you know, people do point to the unemployment insurance benefits, but you know, the unemployment benefits insurance was $600 at some point last year. It's now $300 in the last, if we continue, up till September. And by and large, most of the studies that came out both last year and this year indicate that the unemployment insurance benefit was not a disincentive for work. So. Uh, you know, the San Francisco Fed put out a new study very recently that looked at uh, employment in 2021 and the effect of that $300 unemployment insurance boost. 
and by and large what they were able to look uh, what they were able to say was that you know out of every 28 people looking for work seven people were getting job offers and about one of them might refuse the job offer uh, as you know as a result of the $300 incentive so a very small percentage uh, of people are, are using the $300 unemployment boost as a disincentive and you know when they refuse that job offer it might be for several reasons. Obviously, child care and elder care is a big reason. Uh, when we look at employment uh, from last year to this year, uh, fathers with children under 13 in the household are about 6% less likely to be in the labor force. Uh, mothers with children under 13 in the household are about, you know, about 12 or so percent uh, less likely to be in the labor force. So child care in particular is a big issue given that schools are hybrid form and you know over the summer summer camps may not be operating in the same capacity um, so I think there's a lot more friction in the labor market than an actual labor supply issue and those are definitely uh, short-term issues that we should be able to resolve inflation has surfaced as a problem for the economy do you think it is uh, again, this is, uh, along with labor supply, one of those things that a lot of people are talking about in particular because, you know, inflation is finally registering some higher numbers. Uh, but a large part of that is what we would call base effects. So, if, again, if you're comparing April of 2020 to April of 2021, uh, there were a lot of things, uh, the prices for which were artificially depressed in April of 2020 because people were simply not doing those things. So hotel prices, for example, were down dramatically because people were not staying in hotels because they were not traveling. Gas prices were down dramatically because again, people were not traveling, so not using as much uh, gasoline. Airline ticket prices were down again because people were not flying. Um, so, you know, when we look at some of those items, obviously ticket prices, airline ticket prices have gone up 10% and it's contributing to month over month inflation rates but airline prices haven't recovered from before the pandemic, so prices haven't come back. Uh, same thing for hotels in the same, you know, hotel prices have come up uh, from where they were last year, but they're still not recovered to pre-pandemic levels. So when we measure comparing to last year, some of those prices are gonna show up as being really high, um, but those are just temporary, you know, uh, base effects because the base year you're using had artificially depressed prices. Now there are some supply shortages uh, around lumber, for example, and gasoline we saw with weather-related issues and then the hacking of the pipeline. But again, both of those are fairly transitory issues. Uh, so we do expect higher levels of inflation to be recorded uh, over the next few months, but that is not expected to stick around even through the end of this year and definitely not next year.